May God's blessing rest upon the experiences of Scripture this morning, both the Isaiah 40 text and this first chapter of Mark. May it guide the meditations of our hearts and the words of my lips. In the beginnings, we've been doing the beginnings for quite a while now, and truth be told, the rest of our lives each day Each moment will be filled with beginnings. We started this particular exploration or this period of worship of God with the creation stories. With the seven days where God brings order to chaos. With the the garden story where God tells us the importance of relationship. And, and, And then... And then we went home for a week, or we went not here for a week at least, and suddenly it's thousands of years later. And we've gathered again, and we might wonder, why are we here? We might be wondering, in this beginning of the gospel story, why have we gathered in this place on this particular day? I mean, it's one of the great philosophical questions out there. Why are we here? I'm reminded of a, a youth group leader growing up. He took a philosophy class in college, and the final exam was, why? And he wrote, because. <laughs> and he earned an A. Mm. Why are we here? Well, Mark's gospel is one of three synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, that all have have material that they share in common and, and some sort of basic agreement on things as well as material that's unique to them in some different way. These gospels, including Mark, have a beginning moment. John's gospel does as well, but we're setting aside John for now. They have some sort of beginning to them, and that beginning sets the tone for the entirety of the gospel experience. When we read the beginning of Matthew or the beginning of Luke, we have a birth narrative. And the way that that, what we call Christmas story, is told shapes our experience of the gospel itself. The fact that Matthew focuses so much on bringing Jesus or grounding Jesus in Hebrew Scripture affects the whole of the Gospel of Matthew. The fact that Luke keeps pointing out that this good news came to those who were on the outside. The least of these. Women and shepherds and others who were not the power brokers of society. It goes all through Luke's gospel. So Mark's gospel says, well, this is the beginning of things when it comes to the good news. And any beginning story grounds us. It points to what happened before. What was God doing? Mark does that. He says, Isaiah talked about this. It it connects us to what's going on now. John at the riverside, and it hints at what could be. One is coming, John says. But Mark says this is the beginning of the gospel. We often think of the beginning of Jesus' life, Luke and Matthew. We think of the beginning of Jesus' ministry, which is what happens when he comes back from the wilderness. One of the best beginnings stories that exists in the Gospels is when Jesus comes back and he is in the synagogue in the Gospel of Luke and he unrolls that Isaiah scroll and he reads the very first text I chose to have read as pastor in this congregation because it sets a framework. And yet Mark here is saying that the gospel is beginning before Jesus ever utters a word. The good news is beginning before Jesus ever performs a miracle, a sign, a wonder, The gospel begins before Jesus is even baptized. Because the gospel 
as Mark understands it, and as Mark is going to portray it throughout his book, is God breaking in. The good news is God with us. Jesus is the embodiment of that in the Synoptics Gospels as well as in John's text. But for Mark, Mark is saying, listen, God was breaking in before. God was in this place before. In the beginning of the good news, God with us. The realm, it was present before. And so this is, this is almost like prologue of the Jesus experience, this little moment. It sets the stage, it frames things, it creates for us something that we can hang our understanding on. The gospel The beginning is even before Jesus is doing his thing, and yet it helps us understand that when Jesus is doing, this is all part of the realm of God come near. Now, it's not a fixed box. This isn't a dictate or or dogma that is immutable. This This is a paradigm that Mark is describing And paradigms help shape questions as well as the answers we're willing to accept. In the beginning of the good news, God is already with us. And yet, like any paradigm or any box or anything else we might create to tell the story, we find that God actually exists beyond the boundaries. But it's hard for a gospel writer to capture all of God, even in a short gospel. The more words we use, the more we seem to muddle things up. Just let me get going for a good hour-long sermon. You'll find that out. (laughs) But beginnings also help us or point to us or call to mind endings Beginnings make us consider the end of things. You know, growing up, I used to really enjoy reading those Dungeons and Dragons Choose Your Own Adventure with the different endings in them because you could change the story. The beginning was always the same sort of thing, but the endings could vary all over creation. That's interesting because Mark's gospel actually has three different endings in it. Not that it's a choose your own adventure kind of thing. No dragons are going to eat you in Mark's gospel. But the end, the end that we think is closest to original, since we don't have the original, finishes up with they, the women who came to the tomb, said nothing to anyone for they were afraid. The beginning of the good news seems to conclude with, they were afraid. But perhaps that isn't even the ending that Mark was envisioning. Perhaps that was epilogue. Any of the other two endings might be more epilogue than anything else. Perhaps the ending of this good news in Mark's gospel that begins with John by the riverside immersing people... Maybe it ends with, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. He is not here. God with us. He is not here Because he's not in the box anymore. It's also been said that the resurrection experience is the beginning of the eighth day of creation. Hmm. Beginnings and endings. The beginning of the good news being grounded with the beginning of a new creation, being connected to our beginnings, even on this day. Now, any of these things can leave us a little sort of 
unsettled, we might find ourselves in a wilderness setting. Any beginning can lead us, can drive us from our places of being physically, emotionally, psychologically. And we might find ourselves in the wilderness. Here is the good news. God has broken in. God is breaking in. The realm that comes with God is very, very near to us. We are immersed in it. We are centered and being centered and centering in God. We are consistently being knocked from our personal centers. Because today is another day, a new creation, another opportunity. It's the beginning of the good news all over again. It's an opportunity for us to be church today. Thanks be to God. Amen.